Donald Trump, one-term president. <laughs> Marty Scotty reporting on the the uh, state of the economy, the state of the stock market. Remember a long time ago I said that the stock market was going to crash? And all of a sudden, it's breaking out into new highs. Let's try to figure out what's going on. But Donald Trump, one-term president. Donald Trump will be a one-term president. Why? Because he's abandoning. The good news is that 75% of the people in the country agree with me. Uh, Donald Trump is a uh, is is bad for the country and uh, is probably not electable, re-electable at this point. The core 25%. I guess Republicans, 80% of the Republican Party, people that identify as Republican like them. But uh, we're going to dive into some of the specifics as to why Donald Trump should should be uh, should be on his way, should 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 take off and 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 leave uh, leave us alone. So uh, let's start. Uh, let's start. We'll watch this video. This is pretty good. You remember when Donald Trump said this about the stock market, Mr. Trump? Typical we're politician, all talk, no action. Sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen. Our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. Now, look, we have the worst revival of an economy since the Great Depression. And believe me, we're in a bubble right now. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And we better be awfully careful. And we have a Fed that's doing political things. This Janet Yellen of the Fed. The Fed is doing political by keeping the interest rates at this level. And believe me, the day Obama goes off and he leaves and he goes out to the golf course for the rest of his life to play golf, when they raise interest rates, you're going to see some very bad things happen because. All right. So so there's Trump making the making the case that the stock market is a big fat bubble. It's a big fat bubble. Right. But here he is. Let's watch him now. Let's watch him now. Now that he's the president. We broke a very, very big barrier, 25,000. And there were those that say we wouldn't break. Before we do that, let's look at the actual stock market. Here's the, uh, what is, here's the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Remember, Dow Jones Industrial Average is all the way at the top. Look at this. This is, this is the uh, historical bottom back in, uh, that's 2016. Let's just max it out here. Max it out, max it out, please. And, uh, well, this is the futures. You can't see, but it goes all the way down. But you see right here, we're at the top because it's still early in the morning. It goes, it, we're already at the top, right? And it's ready to break out. It's ready to go up again. Up. It should it technically it was it was crashing down here when Trump was when Trump was uh actually lobbying for the people and pulling people out of the wars and stuff, right? And then all of a sudden it, it he 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 capitulated on everything and look, the market goes back up. The oligarchy loves him. So market's ready to break out, but and and uh, but Trump said it's a bubble, right? Didn't he say it's a bubble? So let's see what he says now, right? Let's see. This is that's uh, he's now he's a champion for the for the stock market. A very very big barrier, twenty five thousand, and there were those that say we wouldn't break twenty five thousand by the end of the eighth year, and we're in the eleventh month. We broke twenty five thousand just as we came in. Now I have to be a little careful because as we walk out, maybe it goes down. <laughs> the stock market is up very very big today. Uh, we've set new records, and I think they'll be continued to set. Fastest thousand-point move in history. This is all about making America great again. Agenda. Uh, jobs, 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 $6 trillion in value. The stock market is way up again today, and we're setting a record literally all the time. And I'm telling you, we have a long way to go. The stock market is up almost 50 percent since my election. Had the Democrat won, I believe you would have been down 50 percent. We've set 84 records since my election, uh, record stock market prices, meaning we hit new highs 84 different times out of a one year period. The stock market is smashing one record after another and has added more than seven trillion dollars in new wealth since my election. The stock market has spent seven trillion dollars in new wealth. Remember what we said yesterday that that eighty five percent of the new wealth in the country went to the top one one tenth of one percent. 
actually the top 1%. So, smashed one record after another, gaining $8 trillion and more in value in just this short period of time. Hey there. So there he is. There's Trump, the cheerleader of the, uh, of the economy. Now, you remember we said, right, the economy to Trump, the economy means uh, a better economy, right? The, the stock market means better economy. That's what Trump is saying, right? Because the market is up. If the Democrats would have won, it would have been 50% down. It should be 100% down because all that wealth is was just sucking wealth out of your pocket and putting it in the, in the billionaire's pockets, right? So yesterday we looked at this trial. Let's look at it again. I mean, you know, you can never get a, get too much of a good thing, right? So here's, here's um latest year. So the biggest increase in the number of billionaires in history, right? In 12 months, the wealth of the elite group increased from $762 billion. Uh, this is uh, enough to end poverty seven times over in the world. That's not the statistic I was looking for. So... So billionaires uh, outpaced regular people. Uh, their income rose six times faster. But here's the big one. The richest 1% continue to own more wealth than the whole of the rest of, the, of humanity. 82% of all growth uh, in global wealth in the last year went to the top 1%, while the bottom half of humanity saw no increase at all. So what Trump is now, he said it originally, he said it was a bubble. He was honest. And uh, we'll, we're going to look at the Zero Hedge uh, article too, right? That uh, we've we got to hold him to his record, right? Because we're going in the wrong direction. Monopoly fuel, monopolies fuel excessive returns to owners and shareholders at the expense of the rest of the economy. The power of monopoly to generate extreme wealth is demonstrated by Carlos Slim, remember I gave you the example how he's how they monopolize, right? Monopoly power is compounded by cronyism, the ability the, the ability of powerful private interests to manipulate public policy to entrench existing monopolies and create new ones. Right. So that's that's what's going on here, right? So Zero Hedge sums it up pretty much. <clears throat> Though not surprising, it's nonetheless extraordinary to watch Donald Trump publicly and shamelessly morph into George W. Bush era neocon when it comes to foreign policy and a CNNBC stock market cheerleader when it comes to the economy. As if they're two separate things, like, you know, they're, they're one, right? And none of it has to do with jobs and returning jobs to, the econ to, to regular people. It's all, it's all wealth for the billionaires and it causes us, it causes the poor people to starve even more because there's, they're making the money on the back of, of, of foreign investment, right? On, on fucking China, they're getting rich. Just like Barack Obama before him, Trump talked a good populist game on two issues of moment, monumental importance, foreign policy and rigid economy. But once elected, immediately turned around and prioritized the core interests of the oligarchy. By raising, by dropping their interest rate, eliminating the the inheritance tax, uh, all all that stuff, right? championing the, the stock market, which, where all the wealth goes to them and not you, takes it away from you, right? Healthcare, pff, you ain't getting healthcare with Trump. You're gonna you're gonna die. Uh, you're gonna die. You'll die on the street before you get healthcare with Trump. The pivot towards status quo census when it comes to uh, two of the most ex existential issues facing the nation should be deeply concerning to everyone, but particularly to those who thought Trump would be different. Ah, see, that's what QAnon. Again, I'll emphasize that QAnon is a is a pacifier. It's a it's a it's like you know what the baby puts the <laughs> I'm, I'm that pacifier. That's what Trump does, right? Trump is a is a uh, pass Q is a pacifier for the Trump people that bought it hook, line, and sinker because you've got to trust it. It's coming. So uh, there's probably 20% of the country that still um, is still duped by that. I'll just put out there too this while we're waiting. So H.A. Goodman, by the way. H.A. Goodman. H.A. Goodman. <laughs> Cowardly H.A. Goodman has 
Yes, I called you a coward, H.A. Has uh, declined my my uh, invitation to debate. And he said, and I quote, he said, if Bernie Sanders is the, is the nominee, then I'll debate you. If not, not. Uh, so, and we know that, that the Democrats cheat and he's banking on the fact that. So he's not going to defend his man. So just that was just a little, a little update that uh, I did reach out to H.A. Goodman. He did see the video that I made, and he did respond and said, what do you want to debate about? And I told him. He said, only if Bernie is the nominee. All right, so that's, that's, that's just a <laughs> – come on, H.A., do it, man. Do it. Do it. People, tell get H.A. Goodman to debate me. He can defend Trump's record, and I'll take Bernie Sanders. I don't know. I'll take his policies and – and and uh, show you how you're wrong and I'm right. Yeah, so, so when it come when it comes to this is more of Trump. When it comes to militarism and and empire, Trump's hypocrisy and bait and switch is one of one for the record books. Just as it become clear, just as it became clear, Obama was a fraud once he hired Larry Summers and Timothy Geithner. We later later found out his cabinet was apparently chosen by Citibank. Trump placing neocons like Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, you got to add Steve Mnuchin to that pile too, and Elliot Abrams, into key positions was a clear sign you could you could make America you you could take America great again and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> this administration is now laser focused on maintaining an even maintaining and even expanding imperial reach. Ah, uh, yes, it does. So um, like Obama before him, Trump's abandonment of every important thing he ran on was noticeable early on. Recall that while campaigning, Trump accurately called out the Saudis for their key role in 9-11. Remember? Who blew up the tower? Who blew up the World Trade Center? It wasn't Iraq. It was Saudi. It was Saudi. Take a look at Saudi Arabia. Open the documents, Trump told the gang at uh, Fox News Wednesday morning. Right? It wasn't the Iraqis that knocked down the Twin Towers, Trump told the crowd in Bolton, South Carolina. It wasn't the Iraqis, you will find out, who really knocked down the World Trade Center because they have papers in there that are very secret. They may find it it's Saudi, okay? But you will find out. Right? So he promised everybody, right? So shortly after he made those comments, the infamous 28 pages were released showing how Saudi Saudi elites helped finance the whole operation. Did that stop Trump from making Saudi Arabia his first state visit after being elected? Hell no. And there he is with the is he's there with the with his hand on the orb. He's got his hand on on the king's orb. I'll stop calling what our government uh, whatever. So so Donald Trump here's another one. Uh, so recently is it is it ongoing? Yeah it is 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 foreign policy sucking up to sucking up to tyrants right and trying to start a war now with iraq right because you got uh, iran excuse me you got you've got you've got uh, saudi arabia and israel continuing a war in yemen an unjustified war in yemen and saudi arabia and israel want to want the u.s to join them to start a war with iran right no but trump is in in now in the pocket of saudi arabia who there is all the evidence points to that they financed 9-11. All right, so he's, now he's a traitor, right? He's a traitor in terms of foreign policy. You're right. You're supposed to go after the people that harm the people of America, not, not suck up to them for money, sell them weapons. He just, they just sold Saudi Arabia, cut a deal, sold Saudi Arabia nuclear warheads, nuclear bombs. So now you've got, you've got Saudi Arabia nuclearized. Uh, Israel nuclearized. Listen to this. So the House on Thursday voted to end the involvement in the Yemen war. Yemen's a little country right below Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia has been fueling it. That's the 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 flashpoint of ISIS. Right? That's how they, they that's where their 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 new training ground, their new breeding ground for Islamic uh you know uh jihadists, right? In Yemen, right? So so on Thursday, um, uh, the House voted to end American involvement in the Yemen war, rebuffing Trump's administration's support for the military campaign led by Saudi Arabia. 
as Congress for the first time invoked the War Powers Resolution to try and stop foreign conflict. The measure now heads to Trump's desk, who is expected to veto it. It's disgusting, right? Because it's all about the stock market, man. It's all about that money, right? It's all about that money, right? So Trump is is floundering miserably. Remember here, even if, if, uh, Zero Hedge says he, remember when he called it a big fat ugly bubble? I just played that for you, right? Now he's a champion. President uh, Needless, uh, Needles Economy Larry uh, uh, Advisor Larry Cudlow at meeting. The market is way up today, Larry. So today you're great. But meanwhile, back in 2011, the Fed's reckless policies of low interest and flooding the market with dollars needs to be stopped or we will face record inflation. Well, we do have record inflation, just not for the billionaires. They don't feel it because they just keep making more and more money. But for regular people, yes, wages are stagnant or lower and, and, uh, and the price of everything is higher. Housing, food, medical, everything is higher, but wages are stagnant. That's called inflation. That's called inflation. Your dollar is worth less. But nonetheless, in 2016, Trump saw it. Now, all of a sudden, he doesn't see it at all. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Here. Well, I personally think uh, the Fed should drop rates. I think they really slowed us down. So here he's saying the Fred, the Fed should, the policy of low interest rates and flooding the market with dollars needs to stop. Now he's saying. I really think uh, the Fed should drop rates. Now they should drop the rates, give banks more, uh, more no interest loans. And rape the economy uh, uh, more. I think they really slowed us down. There's no inflation. I would say, in terms of quantitative tightening, it should actually now be quantitative easing. Quantitative easing, by the way, is an emergency measure. An emergency measure when when right when banks are almost ready to freeze. Trump would like to make it a an ongoing policy forever. Just keep printing money, and is and and eventually, when the bubble breaks, I'll already be out of office. It'll probably pop, you know, when I'm on my way out the door in 2020. Uh, just keep keep it keep it low, so we can so so the so the the market can continue to inflate as a bubble. The fact Trump is calling for more quantitative easing from the Fed, a literal handout to the wealthiest people on earth is an absolute disgrace and the opposite of everything he ran on. I think that sums it up right there. Right? That pretty much sums it up. So, uh, you know, is this, is this a, people like to say, oh, you hate Trump. You're, a, you're, a, you're one of the cheerleaders of the hate Trump movement. You're a um, Trump derangement syndrome, Conti. You have Trump derangement syndrome. No, I look at the, the facts. I would love to love Trump. I, would, I love Trump's hate. I would love to love Trump's uh, success record, but there just isn't any evidence to say that this guy has any idea whatsoever he is doing, that he's a total, he's a blundering idiot in terms of the economy. Right, now, 25% of the people are going are gonna to vote for him no matter what because, again, they have a derangement sy syndrome themselves where they believe, they can't believe that they got fucked. Right? That's what's happening. Can't believe it. No, no, no. Trump is playing 4D chess. He's doing all these things because he's eventually going to, something's going to happen. Now, uh, he is, I, I, there is movement in terms of um, the Russia, the Russian nonsense was fake. And maybe a head will roll, maybe an FBI head will roll, maybe somebody will get locked up. It's not going to be Hillary Clinton, but somebody might get locked up. But what does that change? It only, all it does is it locks up the old school while Trump has already installed the new school. That's why he doesn't care anymore. Yeah, if they get locked up, big deal. But even, even now, he has less interest in seeing them locked up because if you make a precedence for locking up old school, then his, his administration, when they break every law known to mankind, then, then those laws that he locked up those people with will be used to lock up his people. All right, so... Trump has no more interest in really draining any swamp or locking anybody up, but you might still see a, 
you know, a, a figurehead go down. So what? Right. So what? Big deal. You uh, That's a victory? So so you get one, one jerk-off FBI guy gets locked up in prison, and the economy is still is still favoring 100% the oligarchy. And, then, and you're happy with that, right? You're happy with that because, and then he'll go back to, we're building amazing wall, amazing wall, blaming the Mexican immigrants, right? You're blaming pot washers and it, to, for diluting your economy. When I just, when, when all of the evidence points to an inflated, a, an inflated stock market, ripping people off, right? that's, it's like, it's like, I mean, I don't know how else to, to, to tell people. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to just say, you know, if you post your, your Trump bullshit on this, on this comment, I'm just going to piss on you, man. I'm not going to delete your comments. It's just stop it already. You know what I mean? Get, wake up and, and look, look at Bernie Sanders. Here's, here's Bernie and I'll let you go. And I'm not, this is not a, this is not a campaign for Bernie Sanders, but it's just, here's a guy Bernie Sanders of Vermont will unveil a new version of the Medicare for All plan on Wednesday, shaking up the 2020 presidential election by reopening debate over his call to eliminate private insurance. Ah, to eliminate private insurance and cut a a trillion dollars of excess a year out of the equation, out of health care, where all those premiums, like if you make a lot of money, you pay $20,000 in in medical coverage and another seven thousand in deductible, you spend twenty seven thousand dollars before your insurance even kicks in. All right. And it just it just got you gotta get rid of it. That money doesn't it goes right into the pocket of the wealthy. Stop it already. So so here's a here's the uh, the good senator from Vermont putting health care for all on the table, right? And let's see if the other trolls come along. Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, who cares about those people? None of them can win. If I'll also hedge my bet when I said uh, Tulsi Gabbard would be his pick for VP. I would also, I know people don't like Pocahontas, uh, Elizabeth Warren, but Elizabeth Warren at least knows if she's under Bernie Sanders' uh, control, she could, she could um, advance the ball on writing legislation or promoting legislation or... Uh, championing legislation that breaks up big tech, All right? So, so you could eliminate the healthcare grip. You can break up big tech, break up the banks, raise the minimum wage. Yeah, you, you, minimum wage would automatically go up in a healthy economy anyway, where oligarchy gets deflated. But that's that's all I wanted to say today about that. So, Trump, one-term president, yeah, hell yeah, let's get rid of him, man. Let's get rid of him. His biggest obstacle will be to defeat the crooked uh, politicians. Now, uh, another comment. People say, Conti, you too. What happened? I thought you were all yellow vest. You said, oh, no, we can't vote our way out of this. Politicians, they're all corrupt and that the whole system is broken. That is true. That is true. However, it can, if you have a figurehead that promotes policy that is in favor of the people and against the oligarchy, over time, if millions and millions of people rise up to promote that message, right? For example, in France, where you have millions of people rising up to defend, to, to oust oligarchy and monopoly from their country, the problem is you have a figurehead, Macron, the president, the prime minister, whatever he is, not, is going the opposite direction, is, is actually calling those people radicals and criminals. The same here. We have people rising up and someone now like Trump that steps into the into the bully pulpit, into the um, into the presidency saying that oligarchy is good. No, no, no. The market is good. Right. To to replace that figurehead with someone who actually gives a shit about the people is uh, a good thing and can never be a bad thing. Whether whether Bernie Sanders is going to I mean, he's going to get attacked from every possible angle, every possible angle. Someone like Sanders, who promotes uh, the well-being of the people. So anyway, Donald Trump, one-term president. Marcus Conti reporting.